So let's get back to the terminal. And what I want to do is to remove the database folder because this has a cache in it and we don't want to keep this old database. So I'm just going to get rid of this folder altogether. I'm going to go sudo and then point to my home directory and then we need the database folder. And since this is a folder, we need to do this recursively. So rm and recursive force verbose so that we can have some log and I'm going to pass in my password and then that should remove everything. You can see at the bottom, the directory was removed. So remove everything that we had in the cache. Now I'm going to stop the container. So to do this, we can do. And since the container is running to remove it, we can put dash F. So that's going to force the remove. Or we can also do Docker dash compose and then down. So that's going to stop everything and then remove all the containers. Now, if we do Docker PS dash A, you can see that we don't have anything running. And if we check our images, we should have the MySQL image, so that's fine. We can just rerun the image again. And this is also cached, so we don't have to pull the image next time we try to run the container again. So I'm going to go ahead and clear the screen and let's see if I can find this command. All right, so this is the command that we're looking for. So Docker compose up dash D and that should just recreate everything with the store procedure this time because we have it in the script. So I'm going to go ahead and run this and you can see it's already running because it didn't have to pull the image. The image was already cached on our computer. So let's go ahead and check to see what we have. So the first thing you do is Docker PS. That's going to show you running containers. You can see that we have this container running. The status is up 15 seconds ago. So now we can log into this MySQL instance that we have running and then check to see if everything is there, including the store procedure. Let's clear the screen and then let's find this command again. So this is the command that we're looking for. And then I'm going to press enter. So you can see that we can log in again to the MySQL server. So clear the screen. I'm going to zoom in once and then I'm going to do uh, show databases. So that's going to show us the database and let's use that database. So uh, use the patient database. All right. So the database has been changed. Clear the screen. So the ESC patients, you can see that everything still is the same. Now we need to check to see if we have this sort procedure created because we know that this would work because we checked it before. So all of these things that we checked before, we know that they are still working. So now let's see if the store procedure was created. So to see our store procedure or to check to see if it's even there, we can run the command show procedure. So that's going to show all the procedures and we can specify the database. So we can see where DB for database. So DB equal and we can pass in our database name. In that case, that's the patient's DB. So we're going to say patient's DB and then end this with a semicolon. So this command should show all the store procedures that we have in this database. So let's go ahead and run this query. And I see that I get an error and that's because I forgot something. So here we have to say status. So that's going to show the status of the procedure. So show procedure status where DB equal and then we pass in the DB name. So let's clear all this and then let's run this again. And I'm going to make this a little bit smaller so you guys can see everything and clear the screen, run it again. And it's a little bit small, but you can see it right here. So you can see we have the name and it says create and return. And I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. So just a little bit and you can see it right here. So you have the create and return and it says it's a procedure and it's inside the patient DB and some other pieces of information. So when it was created, modified, etc. but we're not really interested in this. So if I make this small again, um, I might have to zoom in whenever I'm editing this video because I want you to really see this. So I'm going to make it a little smaller. All right. So this is good. So run it again. And you can see for the patient's DB, we have one store procedure that's the create and return and the type is procedure and then some other information that we're not really uh, interested in. But now we know that the store procedure was created. So we know that whenever we run the container, it read the script file again and it was able to create the store procedure that we specified. So I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to exit out of this. So now we know that the store procedure is there and so we can exit. Now we're going to make changes to the application so that it can use the store procedure. And I'm going to zoom out a little bit. So let's go ahead and see if we can open the query file. And in here, uh, I'm going to copy the create patient. So this line right here, I'm just going to go ahead and copy it and then paste it down. And then I'm going to rename it something else. So here I'm going to say create patient and let's say procedure. Okay, so that we know that this is the procedure. So that's the create patient procedure. And then I'm going to change everything in here. And what I want to say is I want to call the procedure. And to do this, you do call. So this word is a keyword. So you're going to say call 
and then you pass in the name of the store procedure. So this is create underscore in underscore return. So that's the name of the store procedure. And then we're gonna pass in all the information that we need to pass it in here. Let's go ahead and see if we can copy some of this stuff. So I'm gonna go over to the values and I'm just gonna copy all these question marks because that's what we need. So I'm gonna highlight everything and then copy everything and then come down here and then I'm gonna paste it in here. So we're gonna call create and return and then we're gonna pass in all the values. So first name, last name, email, phone, address, diagnosis, and then image URL. And I'm gonna save that. So this is how you call the store procedure. You say call and then you pass in the name of the store procedure and then you pass in the parameters that it's accepting. And in our case, all of this is gonna be passed in dynamically, which is why we're passing in question marks and not actual values. And then I'm gonna go ahead and remove that last comma and then save the file. And now we need to go inside of the controller and then make sure the controller is calling this store procedure instead. So let's go down to the create patient. So this is the create patient right here. So instead of create patient, we're going to call the create patient procedure. So we can go here, go into insert mode, and then I'm going to say procedure, which is right here and then save the file. So now we know that whenever we call this store procedure, it's gonna return the patient that is saved in the database, it's gonna return it inside of the results. So here, instead of creating this on the fly, I'm gonna copy this and then comment this out so you guys can still have it. And then I'm gonna get the patient from the store procedure because I know this is gonna return the patient to me. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, change everything here and then I'm gonna say result. So from the result, we're gonna get the first item. So that's gonna be at index zero and then we need to get the first element. And then here, I'm gonna pass in another zero. So if you guys want, you can take a look at this object whenever it's returned, but that's how we're gonna get the patient. I know this because I looked at the result already. So that's how I know how to step into this. So we're gonna get the first item, and then from that item, which is also another array, we get the first item that's gonna give us the patient that just got saved in the database. So now we're not gonna be creating this patient on the fly anymore. We're gonna get the patient straight from the database query, and then we're gonna pass it in here as the response. Now everything should work. I'm gonna go ahead and save this file. And again, I'm gonna swap this over and now we need to run the application So I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can find this again So npm start dev we're gonna start the dev environment and then I'm gonna press enter and I see that I have an error And it looks like I miss a comma. So I'm gonna cancel out of this and just close this for now and let's go back to the query and here we need to have a comma so i'm gonna go over there and then put a comma there and then save the file and we need this comma because we have a new line so this line that we have here we need a comma to uh, you know separate the two lines as two different properties inside of the object so go ahead and save that and then i'm gonna open the terminal again swap it over again and then i'm gonna run the comment again so npm run start dev and now you see that the application is running and then we're gonna try to save a patient. And this time we should have the patient coming back to us with the new ID and all the updated information. So let's go back to my second workspace and I'm gonna clear the screen and I'm gonna just press the up arrow key so that I can uh, find this command. So this is the post request. We shouldn't have any patients right now so we can send that request again with the same email and let's go ahead and see what happens. So you can see now we get the patient back with the patient ID and we also get the time coming from MySQL. And we also have the ID here. So this is what's coming from the database and that's what our store procedure is doing. So it's returning this patient that just got added into the database. And we can do another test. So I'm gonna send the same information again, but I'm just gonna change the email so that it doesn't fail because you know we have a constraint. We can only have one email. So I'm gonna say Rick and then send it again. And you can see now we have the same information again, ID is two, and then we get everything back. And that's the patient that is coming from the database. That's not the patient that we're creating on the fly. And that's our store procedure in action.